What's a battery management system? Lithium-ion batteries are densely packed full of energy. If you release that energy in an uncontrolled fashion, you risk burning cars, loss to human life. If you release that energy in a controlled fashion, you get happy e-bikes and fast electric cars such as this one here. A battery management system will make the difference. So let's look at it in detail. Right, the point I'm making is that battery management systems are really important. You can now learn a minute, what took me years to learn. I've been building electric cars since 2018, and this is a very high level overview of battery management systems and what they do. Essentially for these lithium batteries, there's five parameters that we wanna watch at all times. There's the maximum voltage. These may not be charged higher than 4.2 volt or you risk a fire. There's the minimum voltage. If you discharge them lower than three volts, you risk damaging the cells. There's the maximum charge current, which is how much energy are you putting into these at a given moment, and this mustn't exceed what they're rated for. And then there's the maximum discharge current, which is you know how much energy you're taking out of them at a given moment, and you mustn't exceed what they're rated for, or you risk damaging the cells as well. And the last one is the temperature. They mustn't get too hot, or they mustn't be used too hot when they're too cold. So just to recap, there's five parameters. Maximum voltage, 4.2. Minimum voltage, three volts. Maximum charge current, maximum discharge current and temperature. So in a typical 800 volt car, you're gonna have 192 of these cells in series. In a typical home storage application, which has 50 volts, you're gonna have 14 of these cells in series. Ideally, we wanna measure up five parameters multiple times a second, right? So if we measure five parameters for 192 cells three times a second, we end up with 2,880 data points every single second, right? So there's no way you can keep manually keep track of that. You need to have some sort of automated way to monitor this. This is the key task that a battery management system has. It takes all these parameters, it measures them, and reports them to the rest of the system. This is the key thing, the key objective of a battery management system. Other tasks it carries out might be various calculations. So for example, state of charge or state of health. Monitoring the energy going in and out of the system over longer periods of time and comparing it with what we knew, what cells we put into the vehicle or put into a system, we can make estimates for degradation of the cells, you know, temperature factors into it as well. Those are various calculations that the system might, uh, that the battery management system might do. Another task which is very important and which I'm expanding in greater detail in a different video is battery balancing. So if individual cells go out of whack, how do we react to that? And the last one is isolation fault detection. That's a fancy way of saying is something high voltage and dangerous touching something it shouldn't be touching, i.e. the chassis and putting human lives at risk. I'm not going into too much detail how this is done because this is meant to be a high level overview, but essentially one way of doing it is you send a wave into the high voltage system and then you check if you see it in your low voltage system or on the chassis. If no, then it's fine and the systems are disconnected. If yes, then you have a problem. You have to shut down the system essentially. Some common misconceptions. One is the battery management system needs to be obeyed. Just connecting it to the cells doesn't really do anything. It's more of a sentry or guardian. So it will read the data for you and it will aggregate it for you and it will present it to the rest of the system or your car. It needs to be obeyed. So if you just connect it, you're not safe. That doesn't mean anything. It's just there, but you need to decipher the data in a different part of the system and obey the information that it gives you. Some of them have like a emergency disconnect where a very critical condition, it will open the main contactors and emergency shut down the car but long before that you should have watched what it has been telling you another misconception is it does not really control the current when charging or when discharging it's just there to watch what's happening if you're charging your battery pack say at 200 amps all these 200 amps go into all the batteries there's no like oh let's disconnect these three cells for bid and reconnect these other 10 cells and do that quickly back and forth there's, there's none of that going on you've got one big plus and one big minus and that's how the energy gets into your battery pack there's no clever disconnecting or connecting or something like that so it is just there observing what's happening and making sure that the whole pack is safe and that's kind of it so to recap Cap, a battery management system is really important because it makes the difference between safely using or not safely using lithium cells. Monitors these five parameters, and just to recap them, maximum voltage 4.2 volt, minimum voltage 3 volts, discharge current, charge current and temperature, and it aggregates this data and reports it to the rest of the system. Additionally, you might carry out other calculations, state of charge, state of health, battery degradation, etc, etc. Battery balancing, which I've mentioned, I'm going into that in greater detail in a different video, and isolation for detection is also commonly done in the battery system and this is it this is a high level overview 
But that's all there is to it, in a way. It gets nuanced in the implementation, of course, and we can drill down in other videos. But this is, if you know this, you have an idea of what a battery management system is on a high level. I hope this was helpful, and thank you very much for watching.